Hey y'all, hope you're having a good day. I am back from Bristol Motor Speedway this week and well, we've got some things to talk about. First of all, let's get back into this past weekend. It, the race happened on Easter Sunday and I hope your all's Easter was good. I was able, because of the convenient location of where Bristol Motor Speedway is, to go two hours back where I grew up in in Harrogate, Tennessee to go visit my family, go to the church I grew up at, and I had a good time. And we still made it back in time for the race. So, you know, for me, selfishly, like this past weekend isn't bad in the fact that I can still go see my family on Easter. But for some people, I get that that's an issue. But I digress. We made it back to Bristol Motor Speedway. And thanks to the folks at Bristol Motor Speedway for allowing us to be there this weekend. And they were very hospitable to us. In fact, even for Easter, look at this. They gave all the media a cute little chocolate uh, Easter bunny. Isn't that nice? Uh, I don't need all that, but you know, it'll be snacked on at some point. Uh, had a good time. It was a good celebration uh, all around of racing. But we've now got to reflect back on this weekend and ask ourselves, what is going on with Bristol Motor Speedway? And I just I just don't know what to say anymore. And it's like, you know, I love Bristol. It's a very special place to me. I got engaged there. But I hate, I hate, hate, hate to see the crowd sizes dwindling and dwindling and dwindling every year in the spring. Back in 2018 and 2019, I was at both of those races, and it hurt me to see the crowd that small back then. So then in 2021, when we put dirt on it for the first time, I was excited once again, as was a lot of people. The crowd size looked pretty good back in 2021. That wasn't on an Easter weekend, though. And rain impacted things, and they were Really, they weren't even going to be able to sell to a full crowd anyways due to the ongoing impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic back then. So we haven't got a chance to really see a full crowd show up for this Bristol Dirt experience. And in the next year, when things were back to normal with, you know, crowd sizes and all, we put it on Easter. And last year, I was there for the Easter weekend celebration, and I thought they did a good job of that. And even this year. While I wasn't there because I was back home visiting family, those who were there at the Speedway on Sunday were treated to some great at-track experiences. You had the Easter celebration going on back behind the Speedway, and then you had the return of NASCAR Race Day, which we're going to talk about that later this week, too. More exciting things was announced about NASCAR Race Day, if you haven't heard. We'll talk about that later in another video. But those who were there got plenty of fun things to do. But the fact of the matter is, not that many people still showed up. I was there. The truck race crowd looked horrible. I know it had been raining. That was a big player in it. It was cold. Uh, some things like that play into that. But Sunday's crowd, while it was definitely better than the Saturday race, uh, it still looked pretty bad. There was tons of empty places. You could see it from the infield. You could see it from all around the, the stadium. It's very obvious that this Bristol spring date continues to struggle. And at this point, I don't think that we can continue to have this spring date, but at least not with the dirt and not on Easter because we're seeing still, you know, the signs that people are finding better things to do with their Easter. They're not going to go out to Bristol Motor Speedway and pack out the stadium. Now, and it hurts me to say that because I know for a fact that it will be close to full for the Bristol night race in September. That one is locked in. That is the iconic race at Bristol Motor Speedway, the night race. And we have no problems there. But it's this spring date that continues to bite us somehow. And the dirt. What do we do with the dirt? Do we keep it there or not? Because I've heard mixed reactions from lots of people. Fans, one half of the fans seems to love it. One half of the fans despises it and never wants to see it back on Bristol Motor Speedway again. Some drivers like Jonathan Davenport, who races full-time in dirt racing, he said it wasn't true dirt racing. And then you have guys like Austin Dillon, who grew up racing dirt light models. He was raving about how much he loved it. In fact, I, I wish that I had been able to put up that video this weekend. I had a microphone issue. My audio wasn't working for post-race interviews, and I didn't get Austin Dillon's interview. But my good buddy Peter Strada did. So I want to toss over to just Austin Dillon's reactions real quick. 
and we'll follow up after that. One of the best races I've been a part of. You saw guys come and go, sliding, moving. Uh, I mean, I don't care what anybody says, that was an awesome race. But the start of the season that you guys have at home, Oh, it was huge for us. Really wish we could have got the win. You know, I, I thought we had probably the best car three quarters of the race. Um, when the track moved all the way up, Tyler and Christopher did a better job getting there before I did. Took me a while to get used to it. I hit the fence and, um, you know, just kind of got lost there for a little bit. Found it again at the end. That lane I was running through the middle, kind of carrying momentum, started working again, but it was too late. And, there, there was just a lot of conditions, and you had to be able to adapt, and it was uh, pretty cool to be a part of that. Like you said, a big weekend, start to finish for the three teams. Is it a sign of things to come? I sure hope so, man. I mean, uh, we're trying to right the ship. You know, we've been really disappointed with the uh, last couple weeks and at the track, and um, we're working hard. It's not lack of work from either the team or myself. It's just we got to get the ball rolling, and this was great for us. Um, you know, our teammates had some speed early on. We were both frustrated at Richmond, so. Um, we're working hard at the shop to, to be those leaders that we were at the beginning of the year. So as you heard in that video from Peter and Austin Dillon, Austin Dillon loved it. He said it was the most fun that he'd had pretty much in a long time in a NASCAR Cup Series race car. And for good reason. He did really well. We've seen some drivers that don't typically do well perform really good on these tracks. Austin Dillon, for example, it was, you know, won by Christopher Bell, a dirt background guy. Tyler Reddick, second for the Second year in a row, dirt background. Austin Dillon, dirt background, does good. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., dirt dirt background, gets another top five here at the Bristol Dirt. So we're seeing all the guys who have dirt backgrounds love it. And we saw Kyle Larson once again dominant in the first part of this race, a dirt guy. We we're seeing good results from the dirt guys, and we're seeing some drivers that say they enjoy it. But at the same time, we've also seen some guys say that it hurts them to see dirt on Bristol Motor Speedway, Grant Enfinger being one of them. I hate, I hate seeing dirt on this place, but I do love dirt racing. Um, and they did an absolutely fantastic job of prepping this track. We had multiple grooves. Um, a racing you could go to the bottom, I, I think that prevailed for the most part. You could run the middle, you could run the top. Uh, if you had a good truck, you could you could make your way from the back to the front. So I think, I think that's all you can ask for. So they did a great job prepping it. But, um, but man, there's some cool dirt tracks around the country. Uh, I'd like to see us maybe give DeCoin a shot, uh, have live pit stops, have a pit road, um, you know, maybe Eldora or something like that. And so if a mixed reaction of some NASCAR drivers loving it, some NASCAR drivers not being in favor of it, some fans not being in favor of it, and some fans loving it, it's just a coin toss at this point as to what we're going to see happens at a Bristol spring date. I don't know what the clear cut answer is here, but this is what I think. And I think for the time being, I would say don't waste the resources to put the dirt on Bristol next year. We didn't even see a Bristol Dirt Nationals this year. There is going to be a Cletus McFarlane event coming up, I think April 22nd, where they're going to use dirt. So this isn't the only use for the dirt this year, but it's not the big use of dirt that we've seen in the first two years of this. So should Bristol Motor Speedway continue to put dirt down just for mainly NASCAR? I don't think that's the right decision. Now, for the drivers that seem to enjoy the dirt, I think we should have one dirt race. Eric Eastep said in his video, he thinks there should be two to three. I don't think so. Let's, let's pump the brakes on that one, Eric. But I do think maybe one. But let's go to a true dirt track. One that is made to be a permanent dirt track location. Because keep this in mind, every year they do Bristol dirt, they're not going to do the same way because it's taken off and then put back on. A true dirt track is going to keep that dirt there year round at the shape it is. They're not going to get the same exact track every year at Bristol that they keep putting dirt back on it. Because then they got to take it back off and bring it back the next year. So for the time being, I say take it off. Let's leave it off. Let's just be a concrete track at Bristol again. And for now, let's keep a spring date. It doesn't have to be on Easter, in my opinion. I, I still say push it back to May. Because I think that's when we're going to get the best weather for fans to come out and enjoy Bristol Motor Speedway. Heck, have two night races even. I'm not really picky on that part. But let's move it back to May. Let's have it on concrete. We don't need it to be on Easter. Give these drivers and their families time off. We saw even Trackhouse Racing was flying in members of their team back home to see their family. But what? They only get to see them for a couple of hours and they got to go. I had to do the same thing. I got to go see my family for a couple of hours and I had to go back to the track. So, you know, maybe let's not race on Easter. You know, I, I got no problem with it. 
but maybe we don't have to. That's where I'm coming from on all this. You know, we, we, we see people saying there's not enough time for the teams to be with their family. You know, if we push it back, let's not race on Easter, give them that time off too. We move Bristol back to another date in May, you know, sure. They'll race one more week later in the year. They'll, the, the season will finish up one week later. But, you know, it's not such a bad thing because we're used to the season ending late, you know. Well, let's, let's get back to that. I think for Bristol to continue right now, I say the night race in September is, is a lock, and it should stay there. It should stay in the playoffs, in my opinion. I think that's the perfect location for it. The Bristol spring date, take the dirt off, and let's go back to concrete, but let's go to May with it. And in the future, I kind of say Bristol needs to go to one date. Give that spring date to the Nashville Fairground Speedway once things are finalized and they have the go-ahead to open it back up for NASCAR. And then I would say, let's have Nashville Fairground Speedway in May. Let's still keep it at May. Then we will have Nashville Super Speedway in June. And then Bristol Motor Speedway in September. Those are your three Tennessee dates for NASCAR. That is what I would like to see happen at this point. I don't think dirt is the answer. It's not solved it. The rains continue to plague where we have this Bristol date currently. And I don't think it's worth going to Bristol two times a year to see that spring date be uh, a laughing stock at what it used to be there. Because used to, people are right. You had to be on waiting list to get tickets for Bristol Motor Speedway. Now you can go up the day up and get a ticket to the races at Bristol. That's not the way it used to be. And I know we can't get back to the way it used to be. NASCAR and things in general are just not the way they used to be. And they never will be again. But we have to have solutions. And for now, I think the solution for Bristol should be, let's aim to eventually have just one date at Bristol because it'll make that ticket more uh, exclusive. An exclusive opportunity to go see Bristol Motor Speedway might be what it needs to really pack in that Bristol night race. That's my thoughts as a guy who's been going to race at Bristol for a long, long time. And again, Bristol is a special place to me. It's where I got engaged to my wife. And I'm not going to say anything bad about Bristol, but I will be critical when I think it needs, when, it, when I think it needs to be said. So that's how I feel about all this. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. Is this the right plan? Do I have it all together or am I crazy? Just tell me down in the comment section below. And until next time, hey, I hope you guys have a great day. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to Danaby Talks. And until next time, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching this video from Danaby Talks. If you're new to my channel, make sure you leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so that you'll never miss another new video here on Danaby Talks. Until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.